In this video, we'll be taking apart the Google Pixel Fold, Google's first foldable. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, heat needs to be applied both to the back plate and the outer screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry those off. Once the back plate has been pried off, we can carefully lift it over, but be careful since there's still a flex cable attached to the board. There are two T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you won't have to take the phone apart to replace those. Looking at the other side, this flex cable is for the laser autofocus, and there's another flex cable over here for the secondary microphone, as well as the LED flash. There are two antenna flex cables, as well as the wireless charging coil and NFC antenna. This rubber cover needs to be removed, as well as 5 T4 or Torx Force screws. Now the outside screen cable can be disconnected. Taking a look at the back side of the screen, we can see a cutout on top next to the camera bracket for the proximity sensor. There's also copper film on the back of the screen to help transfer heat. Three additional T4 or Torx 4 screws above the battery need to be removed. The linear haptic feedback motor or vibrator motor is located behind this bracket. Here's a better look at the top speaker and the speaker has little white foam balls which make it sound larger than it actually is. There's also a rubber gasket around the opening. The 9.5 megapixel outer front facing camera is connected to this small board and the proximity sensor is also located on this board. There's an additional proximity sensor on the back side of this board for the inner foldable screen. There's a single T4 screw holding on the subboard on this side. The SIM reader is located on this board. To remove the battery, there are adhesive pull tabs provided to help you pry the battery off. However, with these type of pull tabs, I usually don't have much luck, and they almost always end up tearing, so I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery, and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off.
Here's a better look at the 3332mAh battery. The earpiece speaker is located here and is held down with some adhesive, and there's a small antenna board next to that. Moving on to the other side, there's a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat. There are 7 T4 or Torx 4 screws on this side which need to be removed. Three additional T4 or Torx 4 screws need to be removed. There's a hidden T4 screw underneath this cover. To remove this battery, there's a pull tab provided to help you pry it off. Here's a better look at the 1489 mAh battery. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker. And this speaker also has the little white foam balls which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. And there's also a rubber gasket and a mesh filter over the speaker opening. This is the millimeter wave 5G antenna. Taking a closer look at the main board, we can see the 10.8 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 48 megapixel primary, and the 10.8 megapixel telephoto lens. The primary camera and telephoto lens are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's another microphone on top, as well as the primary one on the bottom. The charger port itself is soldered to the main board, which will make replacing it difficult. This is pretty much something we see with all the Pixel phones. There's also copper tape over the shield to help transfer heat. Here's a better look with the copper tape peeled back and the shield cover removed. Looking at the other side, we can see some graphite foam behind the cameras to help transfer heat, as well as copper tape on the back shields and thermal paste. Once the shields on the back have been removed, we can see the RAM and processor, as well as the ROM and storage chip. We can also see thermal pads on top of these chips. There's also some copper tape and graphite film, which is adhered to the RAM to help transfer heat. The inner 8 megapixel camera is located here and is glued in place, so if you need to replace that, you have to gently pry it off. There's a copper vapor chamber which sits underneath the main board. There's a second linear haptic feedback motor or vibrator motor on the bottom corner. And there are three T4 or Torx 4 screws, which are holding the power button and volume keys to the side of the frame. So if you need to replace those, you'd have to remove those screws, and this gold plate would come off which will give you access to removing and replacing those. There are also rubber gaskets and mesh filters over the microphone openings on the frame, and the foldable screen cables right up to an opening in the mid-frame over here. These flex cables connect the parts on this side to the other side, and they're held in place with cure in place gaskets. If you needed to replace the folding screen, once you have the phone disassembled, you have to heat up the border and pry it off, 
and I heated the folding screen and pry that screen off as well. In this video I'm not going to pry the folding screen off since there's a high chance of damaging or breaking the screen. I'm planning on using this phone for a while so I don't want to risk damaging it. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.